So continue with the previous video. Let me finish to talk about what move ES common five mean. So the move actually is one instruction from assembly language from Mason. That means you will move a one value to another location. So after the move, we have two operand. We separate with the comma. So the ENX is a radius from the CPU. So later we will talk about more in detail in chapter two what means the radius. So the radius actually is a specific being defined the location in CPU. We can directly to access that. So the EAX mean in 32-bit environment, I have a location is four bytes. They can store the value up to the, uh, actually they only have four byte location. So that's why any value you want to copy over to there, they only can save for the four byte. So if they are more than four byte, actually you will have data loose. So then here you have the EAX register is the location you will move the value to. So then you see comma we separate. So then here actually we move the number five. So number five actually is the constant number because you can see five, right? Five, then we will interpret into the binary bit. So then this five, I will move over to the EAX. So no matter what EAX value was before, they will be overwrite by the new value five. So after move EAX comma five, EAX register contain number five. So that's the first instruction. So this instruction will be translate because you can see here. This one is for the human understand this instruction mean. So then after we run from the assembler, this instruction will be translated into the machine code. So you can see machine code B8, we can understand this mean you will have a value move over to the EAX. So what this value is, right? Then we will see here because that's the five, right? And also we told you EAX is four byte. So that's why they translate this five into four byte location in the hex. Hex decimal two bit equal to one byte. So you see one byte, two bytes, three bytes, four bytes. You will have four bytes to override to the EAX four bytes. So after what EAX will have the value like this. So then the next instruction we call add. The same thing add, you will have two operand associated with that. So the first operand add the second operand. Then we add or we update the first operand as the destination. So that's me, no matter what EAX originally have the value, I will add the second value into the EAX and update the EAX value. So earlier EAX value is five. So I add six, so then EAX become 11. So the same thing, add EAX6 is one assembling language instruction. They will be automatically, they will translate one by one into the machine code. So then you can see here, actually 83 C0 just mean you add EAX. Then the six, <clears throat> see here only have one byte because they only need to add to increment the EAX value. Yeah, honestly, we are not really sure how they work because they are machine code. Only computer understand that. And also how they decide the machine code, how they work on that is when we design our process of family or we already design. So that's the simple example about how the assembly language interpret into the machine language. If you have any question, post the video, write it down. I may not answer your question now, but I can answer your question during our Zoom meeting. So earlier in our example, we see how assembly language being translated into the machine language. So actually that's continue. What you already did before is you know how to write a C++ code or a Java code. 
So actually, before when we write a C plus plus source code, we run, we compile and run. Actually, we have few step we did. We have the source code. We compile from the C plus plus source code to assembly language. Then from the assembly language become the execution file, become machine language. So that's why we can run it on the computer. So earlier we already in introduced you how the assembly language translates into the machine language. So now I need to show you how the C++ code or Java code related to our assembly language. So before when we learn the C++ or Java or Python, we call that a high-level language. They have one to many relationship with assembly language. Then assembly language have one to one info one to one relationship with the machine language. A single statement in C++ actually will expand into multiple assembly language, or we can say the machine instruction. For example, can you understand what this two statement do? Right, that's very typical C++ code, right? Or in Java code, we write like this too. So that's why you can see here, if you write like that, that's me. You define an integer variable called y. So you know the integer occupy four bytes. So in this four bytes, you assign three to that location. So then here you define and declare another variable int called x. So this x will equal to the y plus four times three. So of course here you have y equal to three. Three plus four becomes seven. Seven times three becomes twenty-one. So your x equal to twenty-one. Right, that's before we learn in C++ or Java, right? So what happened in the memory is you will have a y is four bytes. X is four bytes. We assign three to the y. So then when we calculate the x, we were using the y value to calculate, get 21, then we assign to the four byte in the x. Yeah, that's just two easy statements in C++ or Java. But actually this two statement, now I will show you how they will interpret into the assembly language. Here we have y and the x. But in assembly language, right, you can still define variable. But fast, fastest way to calculate, we can just direct to using the register. So here we just say register, like EAX, EBX, that's the NAND storage location in CPU. So the EAX and EBX under 32-bit environment, they both have four bytes. Besides, we have EAX, EBX, we have ECX, EBX. We will talk about in chapter three more. But now we just say EAX and EBX actually are the ranges. So they have the NAND storage location in the CPU to hold the four bytes. So even earlier, we just write here, you see y equal to three, x equal to y plus four times three, right? So then here, actually, what do we really work in the assembling language? We need to move the y value 3 to the EAX. Why? Because, you see, we need to have a location for the y to calculate. Then you see here, because y plus 4, then we need to have this value, again, stored in somewhere, right? So, right, so earlier we move y to the EAX. Then we add 4 to the EAX. That's we finish here. Oh, we finish here, this part. So after you have that, your EAX equal to y plus, four, uh, y plus 4. So then after your EAX is y plus 4, then here you will move another because we need time 3. So then here we move 3 to the EBX. So this move and add, that's earlier we introduced you about the assembly instruction. So then you will have EAX is y plus 4, right? y plus 4 here. EBX is 3. So we need to multiply together. 
So then here you will have the multiply we call I M U L. So the multiply I M U L they have the value the operand here default to multiply by the E X. So then they update the E X value. So that's why I mode will mode E B X to E X. Then update the product to the E X. So right then we have the E X value move to the X. So that's how the C++ and Java related to the assembling language. You can see here we only have two statements in the C++ or Java, right? But when you run the compiler to compile this source code into the before you into the machine language, they will translate that into multiple assembling language instruction. So now here, maybe you still have a lot of questions how they look like. But here, I just give you the example first. Of course, in the future chapter, we will detail to talk about each instruction and how they work. And also, we will introduce you what those ranges mean. So that's the example about how the high-level language related to the assembling language. Anytime post a video, you can write down your question, then I will answer you in the Zoom meeting. So now, of course, in the previous class in Kansai 110 or 165 or Java class 255, you learned the high-level language. So in this course, we will talk about assembly language. So which language you should use? Actually, it depends on what kind of problem or what kind of application you want to write. Of course, most of the commercial application, like you write application on the computer system, like the Word document, or even our IDE is one kind of application. So those commercial or scientific application on specific platform, how to implement those application? Yeah, actually high-level language is better because they are more user-friendly and easy to interpret. But if you want to write the hardware device driver, so now actually you don't ever install the driver, but long, long, long time ago, when you want to print something, you need to add your printer to the computer, right? Actually, you need to install the printer driver. So the printer driver actually will connect the two hardware together. So in order to write those driver program, assembly language will be much easier and straightforward. So that's why high level language, of course, is mostly we see when we implement application, we're using the high level language, like C++, Java, Python. But a lot of time you see, if you want to do the hardware device driver or embedded system and the computer can, you need to require direct hardware access. I don't play computer game, but I believe many of you play a lot of computer game, right? Your computer game need a better solution, need a faster response. Actually, they need to require direct access to the hardware. Then assembly language can help you direct access the memory and to make that run smoothly and quickly. So that's the compar comparison between the assembly language and the high-level language. So which one should you use? Actually depends on what kind of software you want to run, you want to write. So that's our first day lecture. So hopefully they help you to understand what Consign 260 will bring you.